Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, amen. Uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, at, um, um, the, you know, uh, what's on your mind? Every every um, uh, every Wednesday, every Wednesday we always have our. Um, I mean, we're trying to keep uh, this uh, ongoing uh, throughout our adversities, throughout the challenges, and then this is uh, always. Um, challenging to uh, find himself I mean myself here and then to have the ministry and uh, I bless the name of the Lord because um, I know uh, that flesh and blood cannot keep on going with this but I thank the name of the Lord that we can uh, come here to uh, pour out ourselves the best we can and ask the Spirit of God to help us go through and to help us um, be able to, to do this um, for all of you who come for the first time, this is uh, again uh, our um, what's on your mind. Uh, uh, sometimes, um, as I said, we're trying to uh, soak ourselves in the spirit of the Lord before, but there's always struggle coming in the line. That's when you know that the work of the Lord is not easy. So, uh, thank you again for coming. Thank you again for joining us tonight. And uh, I want to welcome you. I'm not really happy today because uh, sometimes. Uh, that's reality. Uh, I'm saying that's reality because it's not always uh, easy to carry on uh, on shoulders the ministry. There is uh, challenges sometimes, mm -hmm. and then those challenges are frustrating sometimes. And uh, those of you who do ministry, they probably understand what it is. And uh, um, uh, we probably discuss about it. What do you do in the midst of a challenge, in the midst of frustration, in the midst of uh, um, um, uh, things that comes the way? And what do you do? How do you um, handle it? How do you gather yourself? How do you put on the garment of praise? How do you put on the garment of peace? How do you find yourself uh, flowing under the spirit of God? So we probably address this uh, today. And uh, I want to welcome you. Hi, I'm Michelle. So thank you for joining us. Again, it's Wednesday where we discuss um, different topics. We, we start um, every Wednesday. Sometimes we might miss a Wednesday, but well recording online but anyway on Wednesdays we're here and we welcome you all to come join join us on the panel join us with the discussion and join us um, in the comment section um, we thank you for being here with us and we do have like a screen that we can see comments on so we welcome you to participate in the discussion with us join in let us know what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you about certain topics or certain things that's going on in the world today and um, Bible study as you're having your own personal Bible study or different discussions or questions and concerns that you saw that people even in your own personal Bible study group or, or at your church um, had questions or a hard time understanding let us know those things too and we can openly discuss them together and it could also bless someone else so um, again this is Wednesday we thank you for joining with us we ask you to participate um, if you hear background noise we have Abby here you know um, little Abby so she's here in the background kind of over there so anyway um, we have a few things to discuss today but as Pastor Prophet was saying, um, when you're in ministry, a lot of different things come up. And those that participate um, and do different things in the ministry, whether it's administration, um, operations behind the scenes, um, preaching, uh, secretary, whatever, whatever you're doing in ministry to help out, the budgeting, different things like that. As you try to do different things in ministry, um, directing and um, you know doing different things um, a lot of struggles can come up a lot of spiritual warfare um, things come up and it's important to just you know stay strong so that that is a topic of discussion that we can do um, how do you stay focused and, and really operate in the grace and accept and walk in the grace um, versus you know the struggles in the flesh and the things coming against you physically you know not just emotionally but physically sometimes you know it can be um it can be a little tiring you know when you're working day and night because you know ministry is 24 hours it's not just you know a 10 to 5 or 9 to 5 or 8 to 3 or whatever um 
usual work hours are, you know. So it is 24 hours a day. And you also have to keep up your own personal um, relationship with God as well as stay open for other people. So it can be, you know, sometimes draining. And you have to keep yourself refreshed in the Lord. So anyway, again, this is Wednesday, What's on Your Mind. We thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> We got a few people still logging in now. Hey. And then we welcome you to leave your comments as we go. Amen. So one thing that um we it's been noticed, especially I guess since the summertime, it's really something that that I've noticed year round, but during the summertime it seems to be more as people try to um compare themselves to other people, which we know of course from the Bible you shouldn't do. But one thing we want to remind people is the Bible teaches us not to covet, not to envy. We're not to want things that our neighbor has. We're not to desire the things that our neighbor has. We are desire what God has for us. We're not to look at other people as an example or a model. Um, for instance, look at their, their house and look at their car and look at their bodies and say, this is how I want to be. Because one thing um, that's going on now with the summertime I guess people are going to the beach or, or pools or whatever it is are trying to fit into out, out of certain things from maybe last year. A lot of people are starting to really feel bad about themselves and, and really bad about their body image, about how they look, and they're really concerned about how they look. And it's causing a lot of people to go into like a depression and a sadness. And we just want everyone to remember that we are spirit first before we're flesh. We, physical is important because you have to move around, energy to move around and lift things. You know, you have kids, you have um, work to do or whatever your job is. But first, you have to focus on your spirit and know who you are in Christ. You have to remember that God is not looking at your body. He's not looking at who's tall and who's short. And, oh, this person's too short. This person's too tall. This person's too fat, this person is too skinny. God is looking at our spirit and we have to remember to keep our spirit and keep ourselves humble so that we don't get involved with the things of the world. Especially with um, the different TV shows and different things people are watching today. These commercials and things are geared to make you desire and envy what uh, Hollywood, what, what certain actresses or actors look like. And and they, they make these images now, even the commercials aren't even about the topics of what they're selling. A lot of times it's just about, you know, selling what the model looks like or something like that. And it's important, like, don't get caught up in the world. Don't get caught up in, I'm less than because I don't look like this or I don't talk like this or my voice is too squeaky and my voice is too, you know, too deep. This is frivolous stuff to even be thinking about and concerned about because if something happens, tomorrow, next week, and you end up in the hospital, all this little minute stuff will seem like nothing compared to what you're facing. You know, there, there's a lot of things going on now that's easy to draw into teenagers, and it's even starting now where you see kids that's 11 years old and 8 years old having um, depression and, and low self-esteem about themselves. So it's really important for us as the body of Christ to encourage them and remind them who they are in Christ and remember and remind them who they are as a child of God because if we're not doing it for the kids to help the kids these kids are going to grow up to be adults that's doing it you know you have eight years old that already feel like oh I'm less I'm less than this and less than that and comparing themselves to their other classmates they're going to grow up to be adults that's comparing themselves to other adults and that's not what Christ designed us to do Christ made each one of us different. Light, dark, short, tall. He, he made us all different because he embodies and loves us all. So I just want to remind everyone not to get caught up in this whole summer craze thing that's happening out there that we hear throughout, you know, the stores as we're going through the grocery stores and the markets and, and even when you hear kids talking to each other, the things they're saying. It's important for us not to just be silent and watch or listen, but to take part and speak up and actually remind each one of them who they are. So I know a lot of you have kids and teenagers. They're they're probably out of school now, actually. I know 
that Virginia? I think they just finished last week. But um, now the kids are finishing and they're home during the summer. It's important to still remind them of those things, even while they're not physically in the school year, because the pressure on the kids and the pressure on the teenagers are year round. It's not just um, during the school year. So. Anyway, um, I just want to remind people of that. And another thing that has been important too is, is the love walk. Um, we all know um, the scripture about love is patient and love is kind. And when Paul was saying, it's here somewhere, um, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I become a sound of brass and a tinkle bell. I'm sorry, tinkling symbol. And um, this scripture also, for the past like week, it's been something that I felt to remind people that's around me and my environment and different people um, that come to speak about different things. A lot of people um, are starting to express concerns about not being happy with their jobs, not being happy in their workplace, not being, um, you know, they go to work and they feel miserable. They feel like they're being targeted by their manager or, or their coworker. And, you know, instead of um, praying for them, they're, they're talking about them and not really even um, talking about it in a way of help. Sometimes people can talk to you and they don't even know that, that they need help. It comes out as like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like diminishing the other person, um, pointing out all the flaws of another person versus asking for prayer to be strengthened and asking for the Lord to use them in that situation. Because a lot of times... You know, we're in situations, but that's also a turnaround point, our eye-opening, our spiritual growing experience for us, us as the body of Christ, to know, God, work on me. Help me to be more loving. Because a lot of times, we love the people in our immediate environment, like in our home. And we can be nice or loving to them. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes it depends. But you can be nice and loving to them. And then when it comes to other people, um, a lot of people like to tease or make fun or say, well, this, um, there's some things I've been hearing this week. Well, this person is just miserable and they make my work life miserable or all they do is complain and murmur. So when you have things like that going on in your workplace, don't just walk away from the person and go complain or murmur about them to someone else. Instead, help them see the benefits of still having life because our time here is short you know even if you live to be 80 or 90 years old our time is short here on this earth compared to eternity and you don't want to spend your time seeing that you didn't help someone realize the light that Christ has put in them we all have our children like God loves us you know what I mean and it's important for people to know and to remember hey Jesus died for that person just like he died for you. So just while you're looking at that person and, and looking at them in a negative light, you have to remember, we all are sinners. Where this person's flaw might be one thing that you think is annoying or, or overwhelming for you to take their personality, you also have flaws that you might not see that can be overwhelming to someone else with their personality. And Jesus died for that person just like he died for you. So we each have to remember to uplift each other in prayer, to not look at all the negative stuff in one person or, or even look at that, but to pray for them and help them realize the light that God put in them, you know, like, you know, just pointing out good things for them. A lot of times people don't realize the things and the grace that God has given us. A lot of times people only see grace when they see an immediate thing happening, like maybe a car wreck. And, oh, God saved me from a car wreck. You know, but God saves us from car wrecks every day. If you didn't get in a car crash, if you didn't die, he saved you every day. That's grace every day. Walking down the street, that's grace every day. Anything could happen. You know, a lot of people just look at when a dramatic event or something happens, but Every day is grace from God. Every day we wake up, every day we breathe, every day you walk down the street and the dog don't attack you. You're not in in the hospital land with some life-threatening disease. I mean, everything is grace from God. Even if you do have um, chronic illnesses and stuff, grace is still there. 
prayer still works. Keep praying. Don't give up hope. That's what the enemy wants us to do, is to give up hope, to accept defeat. If the enemy can take your hope, he can take your life. He can make you depressed. He can keep you sad. He can put a hold and a grip and a hook in you that will go from day to day to day to even when you can't even sleep in peace. Even when you sleep, you're tossing and turning in nightmares and you can't even have a peaceful rest at night. So it's really important for us to to really not give up hope and don't let the enemy, the enemy really, don't, don't even open the door for the enemy to take it. When you feel like you're hopeless, when you feel like you're ready to just give up, like everything, your circumstances is overwhelming and you just feel heavy, just push through. Just push through and say, God, I know you see me right now. God, I know you hear me right now. God, I know you're handling this for me right now. And I won't give up. I won't give up. Devil, I won't let you defeat me. And just keep pushing through and pushing through. And if you have you know, someone that you can call, not not anyone. I don't mean that's that's not the time to reach out to to friends or family or different people that's gonna lead you out of godly advice that can lead you, you know, oh come have a drink or you know, stuff like that. No, that's the time that you reach out and call your pastor, you call that sister or brother in church, um, brother and sister in Christ. Really reach out and call someone. If you're if you're not even sure what to do, text us, inbox us phone number is there call us even if it's one in the morning or three in the morning a lot of times um in the church you hear people go through things and they tell their friends they tell their neighbors but they don't reach out to speak to the pastor about it and by the time it reaches the pastor oh this person's in a whirlwind of tornado of events and emotional things that's happened throughout their week that they're ready to really give up and 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 really you know don't even see the light of life anymore so it's really important a lot of people say go speak to the pastor and I've even heard other people say you know oh you should go speak to your pastor but then when that person goes through something they don't go speak to the pastor they want to go out and engage in activities that's, that's not Christ like we have to remember that our focus is to focus on the Lord and to not be defeated by the enemy we already have the victory but sometimes the enemy can kind of get right in there to make you feel defeated. Even though we're not, he can make you think you are. And it's important for you to know and to remember, you are not defeated. You already have the victory. Keep walking. Keep walking in love. Keep praying for other people. That's the big thing, too. A lot of times our prayers become like um, selfish prayers where we're just praying. And, and not even intentionally selfish Sometimes people don't even realize it. They're just praying for themselves and their family, and that's it, and their immediate circle. We're to pray for everyone. We're to pray for our nation. We're to pray for Israel. We're to pray for those Christians that still getting persecuted. Just because we don't see it here in, we're in Maryland, but just because we don't see it here in Maryland or Virginia or certain things like that, that people are getting persecuted and killed and murdered because they believe in Christ and Christianity, that does not mean that's not happening. It is still happening. And it's happening every day. So we have to remember to pray for those people and uplift them too. We have to pray for the homeless people. Pray for those people. Some people have mental disorders where, you know, they might have ended up homeless. Some people could have just had a, a bad run of events and wasn't sure how to handle things and didn't have anyone around them and end up homeless. Some people could have had an addiction to end up homeless. Some people could have had a bad home situation and they didn't know what to do in an abusive environment and they ran away from home and now they're homeless. Whatever the reason, they're homeless. We're to still pray for them too. We're to pray and to encourage each other and not just focus on ourselves. A lot of times you can feel heavy too. Well, not, not saying every time you feel heavy is that way, but you can feel heavy just because you're just focusing on yourself and looking at your own situation and circumstances versus praying and being a help to someone else versus showing love to someone else. You know, you don't always need to wait for somebody to come to say, I need help. Sometimes just volunteer and go help somebody. Oh, what's going on this weekend? Are you doing anything? No. Okay, you want me to come over and help you clean up? You know, a lot of people are doing this summer cleaning where they're cleaning out their attics and their basements to make room for things, getting rid of clothes. You can help people with yard sales. You can help. There's always elderly people around. And when I say elderly, it's not a certain age. Elderly can be 
even 40 years old if you have a lot of health conditions going on and you can't do things for yourself volunteer to babysit their kids volunteer to take their kids for a day and let them just have rest and 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 peace and just regroup and who they are in christ and you know have bible study within yourselves in your own group it doesn't just have to be at church you can have bible study with people at home you know a lot of times in the world um I, I remember I had friends that always had like book club meetings. They would do this thing where they would read a book and they'll say, oh, let's all read this book together and get together and discuss this book. And that was something that, you know, once a month, sometimes every three weeks, depending on how fast everyone in the group, it was a small group of about six, read the book. Everyone would get together and do that. But when it comes to like Bible study in your own home or setting up a group with your friends or your family, you don't really find that as much these days. At least, if, if so, then amen, share with us. <laughs> amen. But um, when I, I say stuff to people and I hear people talk, nobody do it. But I still know people that do book, book club meetings. And um, they call it game night, game meetings, where they play board games together. And they get together and play board games. And I'm not talking about people of the world. I'm talking about people that say they're Christian. I'm talking about Christian people that only way you know they're Christian is if something happened and then you they say, oh, oh, I believe in Jesus. But if you watch their behavior and blah, 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 you, you, you wouldn't know. But they're still having like book club meetings for other things and irrelevant stuff versus Bible study and learning about the Lord together. That's something that in your everyday conversation with your friends or your family, you should be talking about God. He's the reason we're here. He's our life. He's our Jesus. He's our Lord. Love Jesus. <laughs> All right, we have a uh, pastor prophet Israel here with us. <laughs> so um, I feel like I've just started talking, but Amen. If any amen. Um, amen. one we has anything a, to share, we we welcome you to um, make a comment. You know, we have a sister online right now over the phone, also uh, listening. Amen. And then uh, sh uh, this is Sister uh, Twyla. She says, uh, uh, loving this teaching. Amen. I, I, Amen. I believe that this is blessing her life. Amen. Hi, Twyla. So uh, <laughs> we, we, thank, we thank the Lord for, for all he does. Um, uh, as I was saying in the, in the beginning of her, of her um, uh, that streaming, that broadcasting, it's not always easy, you see, to find yourself um, uh, in ministry and then to... Um, uh, when I say ministry, I'm not speaking about specific ministry of the, of, of the fivefold office, like a apostle, um, a prophet, um, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I'm not speaking about it only. Uh, ministry is anywhere where God puts you, uh, where God tells you, where God sends you to uh, operate for His glory. So your ministry can be in your workplace, your ministry can be in your family, in your marriage, in your house, in uh, whatever God sends you, place you. For it, it might be for a season, it might be for a life lifetime, it, it might be for a time, it might be for uh, an opportunity. But whatever God places you, Amen. So places you. So um, the point is, uh, ministry comes with challenge. The, 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 there is there is not such a ministry that comes without challenge. Ministry by itself is it, it, it is to serve. So how are you, are you going to serve when you don't even know what to serve for or how to serve or which thing to serve? Sometimes serving becomes uh, a challenge, becomes a load. You can serve through your love that you have for your husband. You can serve through the love that you have for your wife. You can serve through the love you have for other people, for your neighbor, for your nation. So every, every service in ministry is a service, is a ministry. So how do you handle yourself? How do you handle yourself when you find yourself in time like a, of a, um, a challenge? And then when those challenges are sometimes like a feel so real that you don't even know what to do with that. And then for this reason, uh, 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 I, I pull out the book of her, her Second Corinthians uh, chapter 4, where, where, where Paul, Apostle Paul, is speaking about some of the challenges that he went through. Amen. Some of the challenges, because we know that uh, throughout of the days, throughout.
throughout the night. Sometimes you have a vision of what you got to do. You have a, on the, an understanding of what you got to do. Sometimes you have a plan of how you're going to do so. It doesn't always work the same time. It doesn't always work. Even, even if it's like a, a, a good intention, even if it's like a purpose, plan, and everything, even if sometimes it is a God, He doesn't always work the way you thought it would or it should. Uh, because um, things, circumstances, life, um, and people, uh, 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 things around we always, in yourself also, I'm not talking about things around only, I'm talking about things in yourself, within and out. So all those things, all those battles, all those pressure, how do you handle yourself in the midst of such uh, 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 trial, of such challenges? How do you handle yourself? This is important that we discuss it. Amen. 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 That's that's actually an important thing for the body of Christ to discuss. And that's actually something that everyone can find themselves in. When God has called you, you know he's called you. And you're working towards the things that God has aligned and showed you. It might not always be go as planned usually it doesn't go as you planned it and it's important to pray and ask for more grace um, for God to help you through it um, for instance a lot of people travel during ministry and they travel to different locations and they can have a flight reservation and during that that flight reservation that they made a month in advance well that flight could get canceled it could be overbooked and they don't know they show up to the airport and now they can't get on their flight but they know that God told them to go preach at this location. So that alone can, can disrupt everything and cause um, challenges. Even um, if, if you're not a minister, but you're a supporting minister, you could be spouse, you could be just someone on the team that helps start, um, take the music, um, helps with the planning, whatever it is in ministry. Everyone is, can be touched by different things that's not going as planned. When God has called you to do something. Um, and like like you said, this is not just about, you know, apostles and evangelists. This is about the body of Christ in general. God can send you to go minister to someone that's in the world. God can send you to go minister to another Christian, another brother or sister to help them. But when you show up at their house, they can already have another situation and people there that's not allowing you to speak to that person um, as you know God put on your heart and laid on your heart to go evangelize to them and speak to them uh, about certain things and, and how do you handle that? What do you do? How do you move that person out that environment when they have all the other influences around them telling them to stay and not listen? So no matter what aspect you're coming from, when God has called you to do something, you will always have um, environmental things around. Sometimes the enemy comes with emotional things around. They can, the enemy will use your family members, um, your friends. They just come up with things, not, not even where they come at you to argue, but a situation could happen to them that now that's disrupt the plans. Maybe their ride didn't show up and you had something to do, but now you have to figure out a ride to go pick that person up versus you know, even just going to your own Bible study group. So a lot of different things can come up during ministry that can hinder. And when I say ministry, I mean anything that you're doing towards God that you know God has called and led you to. Many things arise. How do you handle those mm -hmm. disruptions? How do you handle those distractions? Even you know it's distraction. You know it's disruption. And you know it. But how do you handle that? That's, Amen. That's something. And, and then for that purpose, we're going, uh, we're going to the book of her, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, the first verse says, um, The foreseeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. The, the, this, this, uh, this, this verse all by itself explains a lot, says a lot, tells a lot. Because you see, what is happening in the life of the apostle is that he, he already knows that he's been called for the ministry. It, there is no doubt, that there is no shadow of doubt about it. He already knows that he has been called for certain things in that ministry. And in a, in, in a separate way, the Holy Ghost has separated them, uh, him and Barnabas, uh, to, to do something specific. So he already knew 
what specifically he needed to do. And that was no shadow of that. But sometimes he will come. That frustration will come along the way. Challenges will come along the way. And sometimes it will be the boat, uh, the, the boat that, 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 uh, uh, that we're riding that will be uh, wrecked. Sometimes it will be uh, yeah. the weather. Uh, there is always something coming along. Or the people, the Jewy people who tried to kill him because he was uh, pouring out and uh, uh, bringing out uh, the gospel, the word of God. This is reality. So in your personal life, in my personal life, in our personal lives, how do we handle the everyday challenge? I, I, should I say the every second challenge? Yeah. Because you see, you can be in the mood of one thing and the next second you use you, you, some other mood. Yeah, yeah. You can you can be ready to go ready sing. To go to the you can be thing. getting ready to sing on the choir for and an event, and for, then a headache comes. And a headache comes. Or, or you or get a pain in your there eye. There is something yes. that comes. Yes. And how do you handle it? Mm -hmm. You see, it is easier to uh, say, speak the word, speak the word. But yeah, how do you handle it in the science of your personal action, reaction, thought process? How do you handle it? Because you see. Speaking the word of God uh, uh, can, can heal, uh, shall heal, we heal. But you see, when everything in your uh, being, your core being, it, it, uh, like uh, stop functioning, uh, uh, what, what, what are you using to, to speak that word? Because to speak that word, you, you need to have some voice inside to speak it. When that voice inside does not even resound, does not even function, how do you use that voice to speak that word? Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is where the Spirit comes in. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is why we got to be led by the Spirit. Because the Scripture says that the Spirit helps us in our infirmities, in our weakness, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. you, you see, it says, uh, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, sing... We have this ministry uh, as we have received mercy. So the first thing that you got to realize is in every circumstances, in every way you find yourself, without the mercy of God, without the grace of God, you're done. Yeah. You, you need grace on a very daily basis. You can't, you can't think that uh, you have this portion of grace today and then you're good for uh, the rest of life. Uh -uh, you, you need grace. Mm -hmm. You need to call on grace every time because paul says we faint not not because there is no challenge but because the challenges are so much mm -hmm. that they know that if they do faint then this is the end of it yeah that's why you got to press on mm -hmm. you got to press on you got to remind yourself you see if you can uh, uh, speak the word out loud then then, then tell to your 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 core being tell, tell, tell to your inner man T t t t tell him to, to, to be quiet. Hmm. Because most of the time, what happens, those frustrations, those challenges that come around our lives uh, in what we do, it comes from the fact that uh, uh, the things that we have uh, planned, the things that we have designed, didn't come to pass the way we thought. Then this is already a problem by itself. So how do you uh, deal with those things? Is to first bring yourself in lowliness. In humility. humility. Amen. Amen. There is, there is that key that will hold you into the face of trial when you remind yourself that this is not your work. I mean, this is not your, 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 your you're not out of the ministry. Right, right. I'm saying you're not out of the ministry. This is not your, your, your creation. Right, like how God. some people call things, this is my baby. Yeah, this, this is, is not yeah. your baby. This, this is this God is giving baby. you right. so you can serve. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the heaviness of the ministry shouldn't be on your, on your shoulder. Hmm. But a lot of times. But a lot of times we put on the, yeah. the heaviness on us. Yeah, yeah. Like I have to do this, Lord, I have to do this. I, I don't have anybody. Lord, I'm doing this and this and this. Like. No, yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. heaviness of the ministry, when, when I say the heaviness shouldn't be on your shoulder, it means that although you're working throughout the ministry, although you're doing what you're supposed to do, right. although you, 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 you got to do what you're supposed to do, that's the service, amen? amen. I'm not saying that you're not, uh, 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 you are not to do what you, you have to do. When I say you, the heaviness of it is not on your shoulder, is if you do and it does not work, 
this should not be the reason why you will all be down. Right. right. Because for it to work, it belongs to God. You see, you can pull out all your strength. Have you ever been in a situation where you pull out all your strength, all your knowledge, all your talent, all your skill, all your prayers, all your time, and at the end of the day, zero? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Faint not. Don't be disappointed. Faint not. Faint not. Don't be discouraged. Because the only reason why God will sometimes withhold the growth, I say withhold. Mm -hmm. You see, God gives the growth. Mm -hmm. But growth won't happen if you haven't died all completely under the ground. Your seed got to die, got to be planted mm -hmm. to the point of death. I mean, it has to, to be, you see, the, the seed planted ha has, has to come to a point that the seed is no longer seed. He becomes root. Amen. Amen. So you, 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 you see, you, you, cannot, you cannot plant your seed while you're trying to, 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 to lavish that seed, to take up that. No, the, the seed got, got, got to die. Right, right. <laughs> and there is a transformation that got to happen underground. Mm -hmm. So that underground will happen with those roots. Mm -hmm. So those roots that will be the things, you see, based on how your roots. Are, are connected underground, that's how you end going to faint or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If your roots are not growing like deep inside, when, 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 when the tempest will come, you, you will faint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and for you to be able to let that, that, that seed die and, and, and to, to have that transformation of root, mm -hmm. and everything is underground. You, you don't you, you don't see so that seed coming. See it. You, you, won't, you don't you won't see, see it. it right away. And you don't see it. looking yeah. and waiting, but he, he looks and there's nothing right, going on. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you're looking for for a breakthrough. You don't see it. Mm -hmm. you, you're looking for a door. You don't see it. You, you're looking for an opportunity. You don't see it. But this this is where God is working. He's working on the ground. That's where the process. The is process is going. Mm -hmm. he, you see, uh, 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 there is one of my my my, my friend. Uh, 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 a prophet Dave, who says that if you want to go deeper in God, mm -hmm. God has to be uh, has to go deeper in you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. he, he has to dig because sometimes there is there is those dirt, dirt and uh, uh, that covers the rock. He has to dig, dig, mm -hmm. dig, dig deep mm -hmm. to get to that point mm -hmm. of removing the the, the the preciousness of who you are and uh, uh, bringing out the pre preciousness. So when the time comes when you have those challenges, remember. God is in the process of working, or is in working process on the ground. Mm -hmm. There is something he wants to get rid of, mm -hmm. or something he wants to uh, germinate. Or there is something on the ground that he's working on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know it by the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then and, 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 and to, to continue, but I've renounce the hidden things of dishonesty. That's verse 2 of her. We're in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're now in verse 2. But I've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craft, craftiness, nor humbling the word of God deceitfully, but the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But, verse 3, if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Again. For you not to faith in ministry, you got to remember, it's not about you. It's not about what you do. It's not about your church. It's not about your position. Mm -hmm. It's not about your plan. It's not about your vision. It's none of that. It's Christ being preached. It's about God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then, then, then when, when you forget, when, when, when you see, when, when you miss that purpose, then you put on the burden on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Thinking that is about you. You see, 
It doesn't matter. At, at, you see, at, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how how how, how far you how, how how many people you have in your ministry. Honestly, it doesn't matter because when Christ is speaking about the, the the fruit, it's not speaking about the, the, the fruit of how many people you you getting. The fruit of your life. Yeah. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. When when Christ says says that we, we we shall recognize them by the fruit. He ain't speaking about the fruit of her, of her, Number. uh, of her, the numbers. No, he's speaking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit: love, joy, patience, uh, long suffering, uh, 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 gentleness, humility. All those things. He's, speak, he's speaking about it in right. your life. What, what are, the, what are the fruit working in your life? Mm -hmm. So some of them are missing because you, 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 you you're losing the focus on who Christ is. He says, uh, Paul says, oh, that's, that's for we that's preach that's not. That's ourselves mm -hmm. but Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus the Lord mm -hmm. you, you see he you see sometimes mm -hmm. the, the Bible gives some specific title or definition to let us and understand something he he didn't say we preach uh, Christ Jesus the Savior no the Lord mm -hmm. there there is a difference Amen. preaching Christ Jesus the Savior just and <laughs> that's one thing <laughs> preaching Christ Jesus the Lord that's something else. Amen. Amen. You see, when you preach Christ Jesus the Lord, that means you totally entirely submitted and then you erase yourself. Mm -hmm. Preaching Christ Jesus the Lord means that you're going to be entirely and totally humble and you must be humble to preach Christ Jesus the Lord because it has to rule over you. So it means what? It means that when you preach Christ Jesus the Lord, your plan ain't going to succeed. His mm -hmm. plan is going to succeed because he is the Lord. Amen. Your plan won't succeed. Your plan won't succeed. Mm -hmm. when, when I say your plan won't succeed, what I'm saying is when you plan something on doing something, okay, this is what I'm going to do, da, 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 and then you haven't invited the Holy Spirit, you haven't prayed about it, God hasn't spoken to you, and you just make your plan based on your mind, he won't succeed. Yeah. Commit thyself. Come me and I said unto the Lord, and he shall what? Direct your path. Yeah. Yeah. Your way shall be established when you commit thyself unto the Lord. Why, why the Lord? Because, you see, there is a purpose in, in heart of man, but only the purpose of God will be at the end. Only the purpose of God. There, there is plan in the heart of man, mm -hmm. but only the purpose of God will, will, will remain at the end. For, for you see, for that reason, we, we were studying last time when uh, we saw uh, Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. who was going in that uh, city, and the Spirit. And he wanted to go to Asia. In Asia, yeah. to preach in Asia, yeah. and, and the Spirit defended, prohibited him to preach in Asia. Yeah. In the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, because he was preaching the Lord Jesus. Yeah. So the Spirit of God only wanted him to preach where he wanted, not where Paul wanted to preach. Mm -hmm. That was, you see, that that could have been for him a, a frustrating. Yeah. But you you got to realize it's, it's not it's not your 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 ministry. It's not your it's, it's not about you. We didn't call ourselves. We, it's we, about the calling amen. that he put over us. It, it's not it's not about we. Uh, amen. Right. We we right. didn't call ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When when God calls you and appoints you, mm -hmm. that's mean He knows. That you're going to face challenges. That's why he said, "Be courageous." Yep, yep, they're gonna come. But you see, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, when God told to Joshua, <laughs> "Go," he, he he told to Joshua, "Be courageous and zeals. Mm -hmm. Be strong. Do not be afraid." Why? Because he knew that challenges was was coming. Yeah. He he knew. But he didn't tell to him, challenges are coming, you're going to be in trouble. No, he, he just told him, be courageous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, he didn't tell him the amount of challenges. Yeah. He, he didn't give him the, 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 the size of the challenges. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. He only told him, be courageous. That's right. Yeah. Because... What you see, why would God tell to somebody that is sending it being courageous? Because he knows. Because he already seeing. He, he already knows he already knows what you're going to go through. Yeah, yeah. 
That's why Jesus said, in this world you will shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. But be of good cheer. Yep. Th that's the thing. He, you see, he, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't want you to think that everything will go the way you want. Mm -hmm. So be of good cheer, even though you're going to have trials and tribulations. Tri yeah. Why? Because every one of them will work exactly for the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Every one of those tri uh, tribulations. Mm -hmm. you, you see, when you find yourself in the midst of trial and tribulation and challenges and despair, that's when you know that God is at work for He's some miracle. At something. <laughs> Amen. When you find yourself and it looks a mess all around, it looks like nothing's working out. Then God. why? <laughs> then know that God is no. <laughs> it's working He's out. He's making some miracle. You gotta see a hold on. Don't don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on hope. Don't give up on God. Amen. Amen. So there is this understanding, Amen. That mm -hmm. comes and, and 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 then to get back, he says, verse six, the book of uh, Second Corinthians, chapter four, verse six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse seven. But we have this treasure in earthen uh, earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God. And not of us. Again, he made it clear that the excellency of the power. You see, when you're ready to do something because God has sent you, and then you find yourself you like trembling, you don't know what to do. That's when God's excellency comes in. Because at the end of the day, you will look at it and then you will realize that this is not you. Because you know that before starting it, you had no clue, no idea, no strength. Left in you. Mm -hmm. That's how God gets the credit. That's how get, get, God gets the, the glory. That, that, that's how God uh, uh, brings uh, to pass his own purposes. So don't lose faith. Amen. Don't faint. Amen. Don't faint. Mm -hmm. if, if you look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah. But don't. <laughs> God has a purpose. Amen. He is working it out. You, you, you can look that you can, you're trusting in God, he, he, he will see you through. You got, you, you see, that's, that's <laughs> real truth, God talk, amen. We see amen. It, amen. You got to realize that any numbers that you have, whether in the finances, in your health, you see, sometimes in, in the health, they talk about the numbers. You have a this, above yeah. this, this, above this. So any numbers that you have, whatever, or in church, on your ministry, about numbers. You, you're looking for 100 people, but you have only one people. You don't even know how to have a, at least a, like a two or three or, 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 or four, maybe five regular uh, uh, families or, or, or attendees or members in your church or in your ministry. Don't look at the numbers. You, you know what? Because the numbers are a distraction. When, when you start focusing on the power of God, then you will realize that the numbers are only a distraction. Why? Because when God brings the growth, you won't even realize it. It will just bring the growth as an explosion. Don't look on the numbers. Don't look on the numbers of where you're at. Don't look on the numbers of your finances. Don't look on the numbers of your health. Don't look on the numbers of your ministry. Don't look at those numbers because God has not put you in a place only for you to be dismayed. He said, be courageous. Be zealous. Amen. He is working deep down. He, he has planted that, that seed. He, he hasn't buried the seed. He has planted that seed. And that seed got to be transformed uh, uh, into roots. And when your roots uh, uh, take root the right way, you know that God is in the process of bringing some miracle out of it. You know it. Why? Because everything inside of you is holding tight to God. So don't 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 let the distractions, don't don't let the numbers get get, get you out of the, the the will of God, the purpose of God. You, you see, Paul says we, we what he, he says in verse eight, we are troubled on every side. How many of you have been troubled on every side? Every side, side from your family, side from your church, side from your your job. 
side from from even even from the store you travel from every side to, to the point that you don't even know where to turn sometimes you really thought that this was going to work this way and then he comes the totally opposite way what do you do travel in every side but something that you got to hold on is to refuse to be distressed is to refuse to be distressed because you see when distress comes in that's when you know that the devil has a hook so you refuse to let the hook of the devil to get you why because god is the process of working out something that your mind will be brought up he will blow your mind Amen. He, he will blow your mind why because that's the god that we're serving yeah he will blow your mind don't be don't don't, don't. be a good cheer trials and tribulations will come amen amen <laughs> That's, that's, that's just true word. That's true word. Because when you're trying to, as you continue to walk in the ways of the Lord, as you continue to see things around you, your circumstances continue to feel like it's crashing, like it's heavy, like it's holding you down. When it looks like you're trying to do everything right, you're doing everything as God told you to do it. You're doing everything as the daughter of God. You're doing everything as the son of God. You're doing everything as a soldier for the army of God. You're behaving the way, you know, Christ will be pleased. You're speaking the way Christ will be pleased. You're doing everything that you know will please the Father, but yet these things keep happening. These people keep talking about you. These people keep coming against you. Uh, you. You feel like your children aren't listening to you. They're not following you. Your, your spouse might be coming against you. Different things will be happening. But you know that you're doing everything that the Word of God has told you to do, has called you to do. Don't think. Don't give up. Be of good cheer. God is working. Just as you said in, in in the beginning just we are we are planted the bible said we are planted here we are life god is using us god is growing us god is letting the circumstances you know when things happen in your circumstances god sees it he sees it he's watching your behavior but guess what else the people around you are watching your behavior too those co-workers are watching you those family members are watching you your neighbors are watching you. As you have people coming, doing yard work, doing different things in your yard, uh, a, a neighbor might keep having the, the, the dog poop in your yard. As No matter what it is, it's different things happening and you're going to talk to that person. Those people are watching you to see what you have that's different than other people. Why are you holding on? Why are you not giving up hope? Because you know God is listening. Because you know everything will work out for you according to God's will and purpose because you are following him and we are led by his spirit you when you go in prayer if you feel like you're not hearing clearly from God if you feel like you know sometimes the enemy as it said keep your your mind in Christ if you feel like your mind is going where you're not thinking of things pure and things of holiness anymore but you're just really looking at your circumstances like it's not working out and you're getting overwhelmed don't forget we have uh, the praise as a weapon. We have fasting. If you're not hearing clear, that's the time when you say, you know what, body? We're going on a fast. We're going on a fast for Jesus. I'm going to fast. I'm going to, the next two, three days, 12 hours, 8 hours, however you fast, I'm going to fast and I'm going to make sure I can tune into God. Because there is something about fasting. It's a spiritual thing. Some people don't understand fasting. It's a, it's a spiritual weapon that we have within ourselves. And as you continue to do it, you will see it will clear your mind that you can hear from God clearly. You know, you, you have to get rid of those things that can, can weigh you down and, and keep your mind busy too. So in the middle of the circumstances, you can hear God clearly because it's going to work. Like, don't give up hope. That's the biggest thing. Don't let the enemy put that hook in you to tell you you are defeated. We already know that the devil is a lie. We know he is the father of lies. We know not to believe it. Sometimes the enemy can give you an illusion mm -hmm. that seems so real. It seems like nothing's working out. You know God told you to go speak here, speak there. But you feel like those people not listening. It's not our word, it's God's word. God knows why he sent you. It may appear that nobody's mm -hmm. listening to you. It may appear that the people that the Lord, you know the Lord said, hey, 
you're walking through the, the grocery store, you're in the post office, and you feel led that God told you to go share the word of Christ with that person, and then you think that person's not listening. You don't know what God used you to plan in that person that a month later, three days later can work out. You don't know in that situation, you know, God sent you to go minister somewhere, mm -hmm. and only two people showed up. Those can be the two lives right there God sent you for. But instead, sometimes people start looking at the numbers like nobody really showed up. I was expecting 30, 40 people and it was only two. Those could be the, those are the two souls right there that God called you to minister to. So it's important not to look at things as the way the world sometimes. Sometimes we come into Christ, but we come with the world views. Mm -hmm. We come into Christ, but we come with world thoughts, thoughts of our past that we just been mingled with the Canaanites and the Pezzarites and been mingled with them. Mm -hmm. But now we're taking that all on. The right, all the mites. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're taking that on as if that's what God told us or said this is how it should look. No. The way God has things look, it's not going to be the way our human mind tells us things should look, the way it should work out. If God is working in your household, God is working on your children, God is working in your workplace, God is working on your neighbors, it's not going to look the way you think it's going to look as God is working on them. But God is using you. You stay strong in the Word of God and don't give up hope. Do not be fooled by the lies. You stay strong in your faith. You keep talking to the Lord. You keep praying for people. You keep lifting them up. You just start praising the Lord and shouting your hallelujahs. You fast. You get up in the midnight hours when you wake up and start praying to the Lord where everything is kind of quiet around and spend that time with the Lord so you can hear clearly. It's important to stay focused. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, just to add up, uh, some, something that uh, comes in, the spirit of everybody, I mean, in the mind of everybody, is that, is that, okay, Lord, I've done this that you asked me for, or I've been doing this that you were calling for, or I have completed this task. What next? You see, the next belongs to God. Hmm. Amen. Yeah. Just be. Don't don't look on the things that you're doing as if they they're, they're going to make a difference. Because the next belongs to God. Hmm. He, he's the only one who's going to say, okay, I'm going to increase on this part and lower this part. Mm -hmm. Because he has his purpose in, 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 in vision. Mm -hmm. He has his purpose in, in, in mind. Mm -hmm. You see, God, 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 God is not concerned about making you known than his gospel known. Mm -hmm. ah! Amen. <laughs> God is not concerned to make you known than his gospel known. Amen. <laughs> your, your popularity is not a concern of God. No, right. And it should be a concern of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you you won't think, you, you don't have to think that because things don't go the way he goes, the way you want, then that's mean maybe uh, no. Let God bring you in the next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just be in Him. Mm -hmm. Stay in Him. Mm -hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Be ready in and out of season. Mm -hmm. Work out your salvation. Mm -hmm. Study thyself to be approved. Mm -hmm. Look upon God, the altar of your 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 faith, the finish of your faith, mm -hmm. and keep. Doing the work. Divide rightly the word of God. Live the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Soak yourself in the word of God. Soak in the time of God. Re build up your relationship. And let God do the working in the back. Amen. Amen. And that out of season. That's, that's even uh, uh, what we're even addressing right now. Because that out of season can be when you see that things with your, your your physical eyes, things are not going the way you thought it was going to go. It's not happening the way you planned. Um, people aren't, aren't, aren't there the way you thought they would be there to encourage you or lift you up. A lot of times when you're doing the work that you know God's called you to do, whether it's, it's, it's be a, a great God-worshiping mother or be a great God-worshiping father, or be a, a great light on your job, or in your wherever you are, wherever God told you to do, a lot of times we think it's going to go a certain way the way we look, but it's not. And when everything looks like not, that's your out of season. When, when nothing's going as you plan, it's not working out, you spent two months working the way you know the Lord would be pleased, but your outcomes are not what you think they are, 
that's your out of season. Be ready in and out of season. Be ready when things aren't going the way you thought they would go. When it's not happening the way you thought it would happen. Where the support you thought you would have is not there the way you thought you would have the support. Out of season. Still be ready. Still move. Still focus on what God called you to do and not get distracted and say, well, you know what? I tried. That I, I can't do anymore. No, it's not your word and it's not your Amen. work. It's God's work. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let, let's let's continue in that Amen. wonderful word Amen. from from uh, again we we in the book of first second Corinthians chapter 4 uh, uh, and then we're reading and we're now in the verse of verse 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 8. Uh, um um if, if you've been watching from the beginning mm -hmm. uh, or beginning I was saying that uh, I wasn't really uh, really uh, uh, in shape in, uh, in uh, I wasn't really happy you know inside and I was really in joy my, 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 my spirit was burdensome you know and then uh, it was really difficult for me to to just like take off it was really difficult and I could feel and sense that heaviness throughout and then I, I, I'm, I'm thankful that I even put it out. I mean, I, 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 I told it because for myself, I will look after the same video, mm -hmm. and I will say, "This is God." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, be, be, because you, you, you know. The, and, and, yeah, and a lot of people go through that because when you doing your walk and doing the calling and walking as a child and soldier of God, it's not. You know, you're not gonna always feel like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. you're gonna feel heaviness sometimes. You're mm -hmm. you're gonna feel that. And what do you do in that moment? That's that's what we're talking about. And, Amen. And, and then this is important. It's, it's important for all of us. I mean, you, me, every one of us. You know, um, when you have gathered yourself, you have gathered your strength, you have gathered your 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 resources, you have gathered your people, you have gathered all you can, and then still you didn't reach the goal. Let God be the next. Mm -hmm. Let God bring the next. Mm -hmm. that, you see, because when you start thinking how you're going to make it happen or making work, that's when you get into worries. And the Lord already said, do not worry. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at your circumstances, you start looking at your bank account, you start looking at people's behavior. You know, uh -huh. do not worry. Because, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we have sister, uh, uh, always Harper. Marquita, uh, thank you for being on uh, with us online today. And she's asking, uh, what does it mean, God's timing? Well, <laughs> God's timing means that you're going to be frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> That's God's timing. Uh, you're that, patient. Yeah, God's yeah, timing God's means that you're Lord. going to be frustrated. You're going to see the frustration <laughs> like in the in the way you really think that he gave up on you. That's what that's God's timing. That's the definition of God's timing. Because you see, every every, that, that's really every time definition. God's timing was in the in the in, in, in the perspective, in the plan, man has always, always been in perplexity. They, they, they were always frustrated. You see, God timing with Abraham, for example. Yeah. God, you see, Abraham knew that God already spoke to him. Sarai knew that they were going to have the promise. They, they, they knew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's, <Amen>. she's laughing. <laughs> and, and God's timing, as, as we were discussing before, mm -hmm. God's timing is usually opposite. Yeah. Almost always opposite of no, your no, timing. No, it's, it's, it, mm, yeah. well, God's timing is always, not always, always. always. Why? Amen. Because he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. My, my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. You see, look, I was speaking about uh, Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. God already said, you're going to, 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 to I mean, he already promised the, 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 the mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. he, 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 they didn't receive any child mm -hmm. to the point they were frustrated. Mm -hmm. Now they have to work it out mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> to figure out how to bring they the... They didn't have the, to. The, they chose to work they, it they out. Chose, mm -hmm. They chose to work it out mm -hmm. on, on their way mm -hmm. so that we help out God. And God, you, you may be a little uh, uh, slow. Let, let me help you. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you see? And, and, then, and, and not just with Abraham and, and Sarah. Jesus. With Jesus. Jesus. When Jesus was called for, 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 uh, for Lazarus, mm -hmm. Ma Ma Martha sent somebody uh, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He... he you see, they wanted Jesus to come on the time 
where hope was still in the body of Lazarus when he was still sick. Mm -hmm. So that time, that was the proper, you, you know, that time was the proper time because they were praying out of faith. Mm -hmm. That, that tell that he then know that Jesus is going to deliver, he's going to heal. So they knew that their faith were, was at the right place. God didn't show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So God's timing first will be always opposite to you. He will frustrate Where you. Where he will get the glory. God's timing is he getting the Where glory. Where you know it wasn't your work, your thoughts, or your idea. Just like with Zechariah. Mm -hmm. when, when God finally sent the angel to him to say God has answered your prayers yeah and he's like what in my age at this time how will my wife before Elizabeth Elizabeth um, husband the, the Amen. High priest. Yeah. something which is important in God's timing is this mm -hmm. God will always use his timing why because of one purpose to show his glory mm -hmm. to redeem somebody mm -hmm. to touch the life of somebody mm -hmm. To save somebody when God is working with you yeah. and then you don't see the thing pass to, uh, come to, uh, coming to pass the way you were expecting that's mean that if it comes there will be no glory for God in it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so God will sometimes went on mm -hmm. until he will use that thing not only for his glory but to touch the life of somebody is always about how somebody is going to be saved, restored, mm -hmm. delivered, so God can get the glory. Amen. Because if it's only in you getting the thing, there's, you see, there is, there is no purpose for it. Mm -hmm. Everything that Jesus has ever done, mm -hmm. every miracle that has ever happened, it was for one purpose: God's glory for somebody to be healed, saved, delivered. Amen. Is is God purpose first? Yeah. God got to be pleased in first. So when God says this is my timing, it means that the thing that you're asking, if you're not ready to let it go, then you're not ready to receive it. Mm. What if 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 you're not ready to let go of your promise? I'm not, I'm not saying. Let let me explain it. Let me break it down. Abraham received the promise, Isaac. Mm -hmm. And he knew that Isaac was the one that God has given. That's clear. Mm -hmm. But when God told him, give it up, there is no way that I'm going to give it up when I know if I give it up, it won't be any prosperity. It won't be any dissonance. Mm -hmm. So what he does is, I'm ready. He, he said, he, I mean, I, I didn't, I'm not saying that that's what the Bible says. I'm, I'm giving a picture, okay, of uh, what he could have imagined, okay, amen. amen. So he, he says, well, I, I better give it up because I know God is able to of, of everything for everything. Mm -hmm. Now, when Abraham gave up his child, that was because he was ready to give up to his promise to please God. When he was ready to give up to his promise only to please God, then God was ready mm -hmm. to multiply Abraham mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to bless Abraham from blessing. Amen. That's God's timing. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when something happened in your life and then you're ready to give it up, that's when God's timing comes in because mm -hmm. revival comes in. Amen. Revival, refreshing. Yeah. Refreshing and multiplication comes in yeah. and God gets the glory. But if Somebody you want to saved. hold on, but if to you want to hold on and not let go, that, that's me. There is something, is, something which is not right. And the devil will use that as a hook too. Because if you can't give it up for God, then there is. So God's not me. We first uh, frustrate you. Amen. <laughs> okay. So let, let's go back. Pray for them fruits. <laughs> <laughs> And then to add on it, God's timing is not what looks good. Mm -hmm. Amen. What well, looks good to us. Right? What, what looks good to us. It that's not God's timing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes He will speak in the uh, in in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in your spirit in a deep way. Sometimes He will speak through other people. Uh, you know, or you know, He will speak through visions and stuff. But um, God can speak to you about something that you're going to do. He doesn't mean that He said go now. He says, you're going to do so. You got to wait for the go now. Mm -hmm. so, so God, God's timing is always for his glory. Amen. Amen. So go, to get back in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 
4. Uh, 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 we are troubled, verse 8, in verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You know that sometimes you have found yourself in situations and circumstances where you expected God in the highest level that you could and that you, you may have. Mm -hmm. And then the thing didn't come to pass, and then you were like, whoa. You, you were perplexed. You didn't know what to think. You didn't know what to say. You didn't know whether to leave or go. You were like just perplexed. Mm -hmm. Perplexity comes in when you you, you have, you, you, you know, it, it comes in when uh, you tell that this was going to be this way. And then he comes in the opposite way. Right. So you perplex. You like in, like in hour. You don't understand. But that's not despair. You see, it says, uh, 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 it says what? It says, uh, we are perplexed, but not, not in despair. despair. You see, you, you can be uh, uh, facing some walls. Mm -hmm. When you facing some 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 uh, some sea, like uh, when they were coming, they, they were coming out from uh, Egypt. Right. They faced some Red Sea, right? Red sea, yeah. They were perplexed. They didn't know which way to they take. They know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But okay. when you're not we've in this... We've all been there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We, we've been there. Like, yeah. now I know you've been there too. Uh -huh. Amen. But when you know that God is going to make a way, that's when you're not in despair. Mm -hmm. Despair is you come to a point, you don't see the way out, and then you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm going to die. You know, that's yeah. despair. You yeah. know, and you're giving up hope. Don't give hope. Don't be in despair. Uh, 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 verse 9. Persecuted, but mm. not forsaken. Cast Amen. down, but not destroyed. You see, <laughs> it's not because God is with you that means you ain't going to be, to, to be persecuted. Yeah. God said, I will not forsake you. That's the word. I will not forsake you. He, he didn't say, I will, I, 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 will, I will prevent you to be persecuted. <laughs> so persecution... It's going to come. It's going to come. You, you see, persecution has many forms. When you preach, for example, and then you lose, people don't understand, don't want to listen. It can be a form of persecution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he boils down in your heart. He makes you frustrated. He makes you hurt. Because you see people going like straight to the path of perdition and distraction, so you bring in the word of God, the gospel, and they don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. that, that can be a form of persecution. They're laughing at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is far more perfect persecution. The, uh, should I say, the, for me, the highest level of persecution is when you have your closest people mm -hmm. who used to be in the church with you or in the ministry, mm -hmm. and they turn themselves against you and against God. That, that's that's, mm -hmm. that's like you know I, for me i'm not saying that uh, anyway so not forsaken although persecuted mm -hmm. so so people are going to come against you that's, that's you. the thing a lot of times people well why are they coming against me well why is this happening well what well, it's going to happen you, you know it's, not, it's, 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 it's going to happen it's, it's not like that, that it, it, some people think that okay the devil rose against you today he's going to leave you out yeah for at least a ten years. <laughs> I remember. I, went, I remember when I was like, "What's that like? Why the devil won't just leave me alone? He don't take like a break." <laughs> no, he don't. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The, the so be ready to fight and keep your faith. Don't give up. For, for all those listening, don't don't think like the devil's ever gonna give you a break and a shortcut. No, be ready to fight because persecution will come from anywhere. It will come from your family. It will come with your closest friends that you've been friends with for seventeen years. But it can come from anywhere. Where? You see, the most difficult persecution is when it comes from your own thoughts. Oh, yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody's around you yourself yeah. uh, alone with yourself. Yep. Oh, uh, you like, yep. <laughs> yep. like trying to get a, a, a fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, but do not be in despair. Mm -hmm. For you're not for second. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's continue. It says, cuts down, but not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
You, you see, people can push you. We, we used to say, eh, don't, no, don't push me, don't push me, don't push my button. But, oh, yeah, right, don't right. push my button. <laughs> yeah. People will push you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will push you. Mm -hmm. they, they will push you to a, 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 a over the limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the devil know which buttons to push, and he know just who to send to push them. They will. <laughs> So it's not because people are pushing. You see that that idea of thinking that uh, you got to be um, um, uh, uh, in your in your corner and everything has to work the way you want. That's the beginning of uh, trouble. Yeah. yeah, that's the beginning of yeah. trouble because everything won't work the way you want. Yeah, people won't always come and then bow them to you uh, and you know, give you your way. Obviously. Even mm -hmm. God, people not. All people bound down to him. So who who are we mm -hmm. for people to to all people bound down? You won't work always. You know you, right. you won't be always this way. So people will push you. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. They win. And when they do push you, you got to remember <laughs> there is there, there is <laughs> there is there is no button that they can push enough. To make you get out of your mind, there, there is not such. It's just yeah. the, it's just the, 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 uh, the facade, the or, facade or, the or, or the enemy to make you yeah. think that. It's, it's you, God will not allow you to be tempted, tempted more than you can more than what you can bear. bear. So there is no such a button that they're going to push to the point that you're going to explode. Uh uh And that's the thing too. Like we people can recite. Oh, the fruits of the Spirit is joy and meekness and patience and self-control. But when it comes to acting it, then, you know, sometimes, and I, when I say I, I, people, I mean Christians, will say, Oh, well, they just push my button. No, who's the lie? People are God. Amen. God is not alive. He say you got self-control, you got self-control. Amen. Keep it together. Stay focused. Amen. 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 So, what do you do when you facing tribulations, challenges, yeah. trials, uh, 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 disappointments, discouragements. And you're doing your calling. Yeah. And then you know that you're doing what God has called you for. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you got to remember, it's about Christ. It's about God. That's the first thing. God is not working so you will have any glory out of it. You got to remember that. What you do, is first to humble thyself because one thing that uh, will kick in is because your way did not come to pass so humble thyself when you start humbling thyself God will bring the deal of heaven to refresh you and once you feel and then you sense and you know you refresh then you can keep on going on your journey I don't look at things as if they were supposed to work the way you want it. You already know that things won't always work the way you want it. The most important thing to remember is God has a say. And his say is the last word. So whatever he says, that's what's going to happen. That's, go that's what's going to, 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 be, to, 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 to be seen. So I want you to remember that everything's around that go go around. They're always working themselves for some great miracle. The miracle can be in your own life. The miracle of humility if you don't have it. The miracle of joy if you don't have it. The miracle of her gentleness if you don't have it. The miracle of patience if you don't have it. Or any other miracle that will be a breakthrough for somebody else. Or a breakthrough for your family. A breakthrough for your circumstances, for your life, for your finances, for your children, for your you marriage. For your but people you don't even know. The, all the, all, the only thing that you got to be in is to be in the presence of the Lord and let the manifestation of God to, to bring you into, into the chariot where he, he will present you uh, to the throne of God. You will soak yourself in, into God. You got to soak yourself. Uh, 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 with, uh, through your soul, with your soul, in your body. Uh, everything has to be in God. Because after all, it is, it is about God. Mm -hmm. 
after your children, before your children, while your children, after your family, before your family, while through your family, after your life, before your life, through before your, your life. It's about God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything will be about Him. Amen. And it's important too, when you're going through things, you have to remember, God writes the end before the beginning. Amen. So to you, why it looked like this, what you're going through, God, do you see me? Yes, God already knows. He wrote the end before the beginning. So as you're going along, the end is already there. You just, we have to keep focus. We have to renew our minds daily. We have to keep our thoughts on God and not the circumstances. Amen. Amen. But I, I troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Trouble on every side looked like trouble here, trouble here. Oh no, let me go this way. Trouble here, trouble here. Trouble on every side, but not distressed. How do you have trouble on every side and not distressed? Because you don't give up on hope on God. You don't give up. That's the most important thing. You don't give up. Don't let the enemy take your hope. Whatever it is, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your career. You know, you hear people saying, oh, uh, this company, and oh, we're going to lose our job. We're going to lose our job. Don't give up hope. God knows what's happening in that job situation. That's not the only job. Mm -hmm. you, who told you that was the only job and that your resume have to look like this so you'll get a job somewhere else? That's your limited thinking. That's not God's limit. Don't limit God by your thinking. Oh, well, they said you need this to, to work this job and you need this kind of degree. Pray and send your resume in everywhere that you feel led to send your resume in because God opened doors that no man can shut. And a lot of times we know the scripture, but when it comes to do it, oh, I really, you know, this job and this job. If you prayed about it, you feel led to do it. Send, send your resume in. That's not your only job. That's not your only career, the only place you're going to be good at. God can use you now. Good this job is ending. Good this job is closing and everything's happening. Because now God wants to position you somewhere else. So that now that you've matured some in Christ, to you it may not look like it. But if you look back over the months and the years, you see where you matured in Christ. Now he wants to put you in this environment to help these people and lead these people. Amen. So don't give up hope. Just because it doesn't look like what you think it was and it didn't go the way you planned, it's going according to God's plan. You're walking in Him, you're standing in His path, you're following His word, your behavior is Christ, you're trying to imitate Jesus on a daily basis, renewing you're your thoughts. You're trying, you tr you imitating Jesus. Right, not try, that's right, because try is an excuse for you to say, oh, I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. You are imitating Jesus if you... You fall short, you pray and go right back on your holiness because the Bible said we are the mantle of Christ over you, the blood of Christ you have over you, the righteousness of Christ that you put on. Holiness is not your deeds. Right, right. But holiness is a state of your heart. Mm, amen. 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 The state of your heart. When the state of your heart amen. is connected to God, that's where holiness comes in. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. When I say the state of your heart, you know, you, say, you see, let me take an example. The state of your heart, you can't say the state of your heart is pure before God when you spend your, your, your time cursing. That's, and you, that's, 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 it doesn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Because when the state of your heart is in God, in the holiness of God, your action comes with the pure, purity and the, 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 the purity of God. You and know you're what I'm not saying? thinking wickedness yeah, against yeah, other people yeah, yeah. You, and all no, that. You know, those wicked stuff. Your uh, heart wicked, is really you, try, is really walking in the ways of the Amen. Lord and following Amen. what he said. Amen. So that's that's really important. To to get back to the, to, to what we were saying, uh, uh, that uh, uh, God uh, 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 writes the, the end uh, uh, from the beginning. He knows the end. He he. He knows the whole picture. He knows he knows how the movie is going to end. But he will he will not give you all time the full movie. No. Mm mm. He won't answer like how I do. What's gonna happen on this part? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so, what, what's gonna yeah, happen? So, so that when we watch when we watch uh, some uh, uh, TV, uh, uh, I mean movie, uh, and then she 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 would tell me what's next. Uh, uh, you know, God is not going to give you the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bishop Alan says he ain't going to receive the whole video. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 But when he says be courageous, when he says be zealous. When he said, do not despair, when he said, do not be worried, 
Don't worry. Why, why do you want to worry at all? Because mm -hmm. he knows things are going to come to try to make you worry. So don't, you see, when worry comes in, you, the only thing you got to think of is Jesus said, don't worry. I ain't going to worry about it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk in the ways of the Lord. I'm going to do what I know I'm supposed to do. Don't worry. God. Mm -hmm. Do not worry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, that's for somebody. Do mm -hmm. not worry. I, I repeat again. For somebody, God says, do not worry. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I repeat again. The Lord wants me to repeat again for you. God says, do not not worry. He says right now, as you sitting there, right there, where you at right now, he says, do not worry. I, I can see your face changing, uh, the countenance. God is speaking right now to you, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It says, do not worry. Why? Because there is a report that is coming that won't be something that you were looking for or expecting. But God is in the miracle working, is turning around your situation, is turning around your entire life, and is giving you something that you have ever, never even thought of. Because He wants to get the glory out of it. That's why He wants you to get on tune. He wants you to tune yourself into Him. And He says, do not worry. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 And then, uh, so to come back here in the book of her. Uh, 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 I want to jump in the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 29. Amen. Book of Jeremiah chapter 29 says in the verse, verse 11, For I know the thought that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you on what? Unexpected end. Mm -hmm. You see, when God was speaking through the mouth of the yeah. prophet, they were not in a good shape. They were not in a good place. They were in what? Babylon. Mm -hmm. They were in captivity. They were right in the midst of captivity. You see, they would have a hope or expected that God would come and say, you're going to be out right now and right there. Mm -hmm. he, you, you see, when, yeah. when you're in yeah. the midst of trial, yeah. you want to hear God say, I'm going to deliver you now. One day. You got one day left. Mm -hmm. One day left or one hour left yeah. and you're going yeah. to be delivered. Yeah. God will not always deliver you right there and right then. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Ha! That's, that's right. God will not always rescue you, deliver you right there and right then. We saw throughout the Bible many, many instances where God did not deliver people right there and right then. He didn't do it for, uh, uh, for Lazarus. He didn't come right there and right then. When, right there and right then when they call on him. Mm -hmm. The scriptures speak about uh, the apostles and, and Steve and Steve being a being a, a, a stone. Yeah. He didn't deliver him right there and right then. Mm -hmm. And when people say why? Why? Because of the glory of God. Amen. You see, the glory of God is above our mind. He, you see, when God is sovereign about what he does, he he we see death. Or we see trouble, we see trial as difficulties. God sees as opportunity. Amen. Amen. A field to promote you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you call it death. He he calls it the beginning of life. Amen. So when when you put yourself in the place of death, he he, he is already in the place of life. Mm -hmm. So why are you worried about the place of death? Mm -hmm. He he he's, he's wondering why you don't see life. When, when, when you see that your boat is sinking, but Jesus is sleeping, don't, don't you see it? Mm -hmm. Because he's not worrying about the tempest, mm -hmm. a, 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 about, the, about the storm. Amen. Why, why is Jesus sleeping in your boat? You see, Jesus is with you in your boat, mm -hmm. right in the midst of the sea, and he sleeps. Mm -hmm. You got to understand something. He is not worried about the storm because he knows he has given you the word to cast out that storm. And he knows it won't defeat you. And he knows that storm won't swallow you up. Amen. He knows that that storm won't turn around your whole life. All he wants you to do is to be at peace. Mm -hmm. In good 
a good cheer. And man, that's just like when the boat was destroyed. Yeah. They still made it to the island. To the island. Uh, uh, the, the boat are full. Yeah. He, yeah. He, it doesn't matter what you're going to lose in the process, lose in the process because everything you're going to lose won't be simply because uh, God does not love you or does not care. No. Everything you're going to lose, we're not supposed to make it to the next level with you. It's simple. Amen. And he will put you right where he wants you to be. Some stuff will make you be too heavy. Mm -hmm. To be able to fly. Mm -hmm. So you got to get rid of it. Amen. Amen. Because, you see, you, you, you got to get... The Lord says, those who wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew, Renew their, their strength. strength. And we will do what? They will fly. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have all the burden on your back, how are you going to fly? <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your wings will, will be hindered. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, sometimes God will get rid of stuff mm -hmm. to help you find light. Amen. 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 So, to come back to, you, to uh, Jeremiah 29, he, he says, I know that I think toward you, saith the Lord, stuff of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And then verse 12, then ye shall. Sh shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when you find your midst, and uh, you find yourself in the midst of the trial, or in uh, any 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 disappointment, whatever you want to name it, mm -hmm. you got to remember that yeah. God says He knows the end. He knows the end. He He knows the end. And the end is not going to give you evil or to do you evil. When, when the Bible says all things work for good to those who love God mm -hmm. and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. According to who? His, his purpose. purpose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget that the, the part that says who are called according to his purpose. We forget it. Mm -hmm. we, we sometimes don't even say it. Mm -hmm. We only say all things work for good for those who love God. But <laughs> according to his purpose. It's his purpose. <laughs> So, what's the purpose of what's going in your life right now? What's the purpose of God? Well, how God is going to get the glory? Do not be despair. The ministry you have, don't be despair. Mm -hmm. The church you're in, don't be despair. The marriage, don't be despair. Your children, your husband, your wife, your family, people you're praying for. Your Amen. nation, Amen. your community, Amen. don't be despair. Amen. For God said, I know I'm going to give you an expected end. Mm -hmm. Which means an end which is not written by the end of man. Amen. That's right. He's, no, no man will know how this is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. But it shall turn out. For the glory of God. And all will work out for your good. Or Amen. for good. Amen. So, hold on. Amen. Verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me, me. and find, find me. me. You see, when you are in the midst of some kind of darkness and shadow, and you find God, that, that's when you know that God is your light. Mm -hmm. Because... He says, you shall seek me and find me. But as I said, this, this prophecy is when the children of Israel were in Babylon, mm -hmm. in captivity. Mm -hmm. They were in the midst of the trial, mm -hmm. of the tribulation. And he said, you shall seek me and find me right there and right there. Mm -hmm. So how do you seek God and find God in the midst of your trial? By knowing that you have an expected hand. By thinking and reminding and, re uh, 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 and replaying in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, I have an expected hand. I have an expected hand. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is coming now, whatever I am in now, is not going to be the end. It's not going to be the last. It's not going to be the 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 the, 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 the It's not over. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I let God being my source. Being the end, being the end, being whatever. But God knows your expected end. Mm -hmm. Don't let 
circumstances. Don't let situations, don't let your bank account define your provision. Amen. Let God be your expected end. Mm -hmm. And you will find him in the midst of it. Amen. And don't let the bad reports, don't let these don't health let it. reports, these health conditions define it. God has an expected end. He has an expected end. Mm -hmm. He does. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, the people of the religion, the religious people, we want you to think that there is no hope. That this is like, like you're doomed. Mm -hmm. you, you ain't doomed. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, when ye shall search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Mm -hmm. Why all your heart? Because you got to remove your eye from the condition so you can be focused on God. Mm -hmm. he, he wants, you see, God wants your heart, all your heart, when you find yourself in the midst of a condition, mm -hmm. of a circumstance. All your heart. All your heart. All your thoughts. All. All, all. Everything. All. All your heart. He, he wants all. You will find him right in the midst when you give him all. Because he's there. And this is the God we serve. Mighty in battle. Mm -hmm. Awesome God. He, 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 you see, this is so amazing when a God says, let it be light. When God said, let it be light, the fact is, no light has ever, never existed then. So God did not even see any light. Holy soul was the word that he has pronounced. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when darkness was overing, mm -hmm. and God said, let it be light, mm -hmm. the only thing he says is told to darkness, cease. Mm -hmm. Open, mm -hmm. because I'm sending something that will be over you. Mm -hmm. So I decree and I prophesy and I decree and I declare something that comes out of me. Darkness was already out. But when something came out of God, darkness could not comprehend it. They have to open a way. Mm -hmm. Let it be light. Amen. So when God says, let it be light in your situation, stop looking at the side where you don't see the light. There is a light that is leading you to the path of victory. Mm -hmm. So stop looking at your situation. God has not said the last word yet. Amen. He hasn't said the last word yet. There is much more in the store. There is much more in God than whatever you have expected. You don't see the growth that you're looking for? Don't stop. Amen. Amen. You don't see the turnaround you're looking for? Don't stop. Yes. Don't stop. Because after all, God is not finished with you yet. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Always growth. Always maturing in Christ. Always things turning around. Always. Always. You just don't stop. You just don't give up hope. Just don't stop. Amen. I know we all can look back and see, and see that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and if, amen. Amen. This is, this is awesome. You see, when God has a laid, laid, laid a path before you, He has laid down your whole life. And you, he wrote your whole life. And then in your whole life, it says at the end, I'm going to give you an expected end. That's mean he you see, expected end means that he has already designed it to be. Mm -hmm. It is an expectation to be so. Mm -hmm. So don't you do anything to stop it and to change it because he already has the he, expected end. The expected path. end. God has already written that the expected end. Eventually, you know, the only person who can get out of that expectation is you yourself. Mm -hmm. By giving up. By, by giving up. Hope. By stop, stop the but walk of faith. You see, even when you give up, that end is still waiting for you. It's still there. That's the thing. You come back, it's still there. Amen. God, God does not repent. Amen. Amen. Because you, you're messing up. The, the, the end, he wrote the end. He, he wrote the end already. Mm -hmm. Before you mess up. Mm -hmm. So all you got to do is to what? Repent. Which means to make a U-turn. Mm -hmm. And you hear a lot of people say, 
Oh, well, why change now? Oh, uh, yeah, you're, you're walking the, the cross, the Christ walk Because now. Why, right there now? are a lot of fruits, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. that you can experience from the moment you change to what to what that expected end. Mm -hmm. You will experience a lot of stuff that will not only be good for yourself, and but also be good for others. Mm -hmm. You see, many people are waiting for you. Why yes. do I say that? Ooh. Because God Ooh. has put a word in your mouth Ooh. that somebody is waiting for. Ooh. And instead of mashing this word to swallow for yourself, Ooh. let God bring out that for, for that word. He wants to say through your mouth, let there be light. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. Amen. Amen. So stop messing up around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stop messing around. Amen. God has a word that he has planted Amen. inside of you. Amen. He has a word that he has planted in your spirit. He has a word that he has planted in your soul. Amen. That somebody is in need of it. So stop hindering that word. Let God speak forth through you. Amen. Let there be light. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Amen. This was. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this was a blessing. I know a refreshing for everyone because everyone, no matter what your walk and calling is that God has assigned to you, whether it is. It's like we said, secretary, administrative work for, for the kingdom of God. Whether it's ministering to people in your neighborhood. Whether it's ministering to people in, 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 your, in your, what do you call that? Um, in your environment. In your environment, where a knitting group. No, no matter where you are, God has placed you and assigned you here for a purpose. And we are not to give up hope no matter what it looks like, no matter what. On this side, this side, this side, it looks like nothing's working out. It's going to work out. Don't give right. up hope because it's going to work out. God already wrote it. It's already done. He already spoke over your life. And it's important, too, for us to remember that God has already spoken. When God, we see the miracles God did and the things God got us through, and we're like, ooh, God got us through this. But then another problem comes, and it's like you forget what God already did. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget what God already did. He yeah. don't work many miracles. Why do you think he's going to stop now? He right. ain't stopped. He's got a task, an assignment for you. So you are to keep focused. Keep reminding yourself, God, right. God rescued me from this. He saved me from this. He brought me out of this. He renewed my mind from this. He delivered me from this. He still will continue to deliver until he calls you up. Amen. So don't give up. Amen. 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 So Amen. we thank you all. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> for joining us um, on Wednesday for our discussion of what do you do sometimes um, when you know God has called you and you're walking your path, but you feel heavy, you feel dismayed. For those of you that's just joining on, um, it will still be there. We ask you to go back and watch it. You can still leave your comments and questions, and we will address it um, our, our next Wednesday. So, amen. 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 Again, uh, again, thank you for every one of you amen. who've been uh, <coughs> watching, and, and uh, uh, this is a blessing for us in return. Yes. By um, by having a fellowship with you is a blessing of us. It's a blessing for us. A blessing for us, and I thank. All of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Again, as I said, uh, I bless the name of the Lord that the, the beginning uh, of this time uh, mm -hmm. was heavy for me. It was really heavy. I mean, uh, all honesty, it was really heavy. I, I could feel the heaviness throughout my soul. The, I mean, it was really heavy. And, and, and uh, it was like uh, the happiness has left uh, my spirit. But I knew I couldn't uh, uh, focus on my on my personal emotions or my personal uh, I'm feeling right. and then and stop the work of the Lord. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing. I'm glad that somebody somewhere has received today the word of God. Because if I was to lay on my own circumstances or on my own uh, um, perplexity, I would have probably a, 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 a sin. Probably sin because I wouldn't have done what I'm supposed to do from the Lord. So I, I thank the Lord for the opportunity, for the grace that He's giving us. 
that grace. Uh, as I said for myself, is a great encouragement that I see God moving through all, through my life, through my wife, through my children, through my, 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 my family, through my, my household, through everything that He has given me around. He, he moves the way He wants. And then I thank Him for that. Uh, that's why I want to encourage you tonight. Don't lose hope. Don't, don't stop lose praying. hope. Don't, don't stop praying. Don't stop soaking in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Don't stop doing what God has called you for. Mm -hmm. The only thing I want you to remember is God is the only one who has to get the glory out of it, mm -hmm. the credit out of it. Mm -hmm. And His name is more important to be known. God wants to, make, God wants to make known His name, His gospel. It's not about your popularity. It's not about you being known. It's about Him being known. So when things does not work the way you want, slow down. Let God have the lead. Sometimes you, we rush ahead of God. We rush ahead of things that He has for us. He, he, we rush even ahead of things that He has sent, at, sent, sent us into. And sometimes He becomes frustration over frustration. You got to remember, God has His own ways. And His ways are better than ours. God bless you. God be with you. And we want to pray for you tonight. And where, where you, wherever you are, uh, as you're watching, I want to pray for you right now and ask to the Lord to touch your life right now, to meet you at the point of your need. Some of you need a miracle. And I know my God is still in the business of working miracle. Some of you need deliverance. I know He's a deliverer. Some of you he need healing. I know my God He's a healer. Some of you need something from God. I know God answers the prayer of the saints. So we will present the prayer before the throne of God in the incense for a sweet incense before God. Father God, I bless your holy name, Lord. I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit, Father God, saturate the life of somebody. Let your spirit, Father God, saturate the life of my sister. Let your spirit, Father God, break the chains out of a neck, Lord. I remove, Father God, any heaviness, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I release thy word, Father God, over whosoever, Father God, is willing to receive thy word. Lord, I decree and I declare that the power of God is touching the life of those, Father God, who has encountered a disease, who has encountered a problem with the health i'm releasing father god the healing the healing father god in the name of jesus lord some of them are looking for a miracle lord they have no way to go they don't know what to do they don't know where to call on but lord i call on you lord and i open that door in the name of jesus i release that miracle father god and i speak father god the life transformation life father god over the life some of them father god are looking for Father God, for your answers, O oh Lord. Speak, Father God, tonight. Lord, some of them, Father God, are heavy burdened, Lord. They are discouraged. They are, dis they are disappointed, Father God. Some of them want to stop what they're doing in the name of the Lord. Lord, I send your angels, Father God, to revive them in the name of Jesus. To revive them in the name of Jesus. I pour out of your blessing, Lord. I pour out your anointing, Lord. I refresh them by the dew of Hermon. I refresh them by the dew of heaven in the name of Jesus. I release thy word. Touch the life in the name of Jesus. Touch the life. Open the eyes, oh Lord. Open the understanding in the name of Jesus. Lord, the multiply. Let it be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. As you're watching, I know some of you never Ne, 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 never gave up their life entirely to God. Some of you struggling again, struggling their world with God. Some of you uh, have, have, have even departed from the ways of the Lord. Some of you don't know which way to take to, to come. I, I, I'm asking now to the angel of God to minister unto you. All you got to do, open up your heart, open up your mind, let the word of God meet you right there at the point of your need there is a miracle that miracle of transformation of your heart there is a miracle available that transformation of your spirit that transformation of your soul god is transforming your mind he's removing the interest he's 
removing the scales. And I pray in the name of Jesus that deliverance is taking place in your life right now. Whatever addiction that you've been struggling against, you've been struggling with, I pray in the name of Jesus that you be delivered by the power of God. I set you free by the power of God. I release and I decree over your life in the name of Jesus. Deliver us now. Deliver us now. I release you. I release you by the power of God. Receive that deliverance in the name of Jesus. I blow the spirit of God. I blow the mighty power of God. And I release it in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, my God. For what you already done. I bless you for. Every one. Of us. I bless you Father God. For those to whom. It has been given to know the mysteries of heaven. And to enter your gates. I bless you Lord. I thank you Jesus. Let thy word. Let thy word. Be. Let it be light in this life. Let it be light in this person. Let it be light right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, again. Amen. Thank you for Amen. being with us tonight. This is uh, our Wednesday fellowship. What's on your mind? Amen. God moved the way He wants. Amen. And uh, we want to invite you next uh, Wednesday. We also have Amen. services. Uh, I call them experience, worship experience. Amen. Every Friday, every Sunday. Um, Friday uh, at 8. Friday at 8 p.m. And Sunday from 10.30. We move the way God wants to move. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to join us uh, either here or online or in the spirit whatever god leads you to mm -hmm. as i said it's all about god and we want to see people uh, uh totally delivered totally restored totally renewed in the ways of the lord so come let us worship god together and give him the glory give him a shout <laughs> hey! <Hallelujah. laughs> amen thank you lord thank amen. you jesus